Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because I have two special guests on my show. We have Mary Jackson and we have Thornton, who helped co-author Mary's book, and both of them together have done some miraculous things to help people, especially children in our society. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to give the show away to them. So Mary, you do you want to start it and maybe tell people a little about yourself and what you're doing and how you're helping to change the world and make it a better place? Mm -hmm. Stacy, thank you so much for having us on. And uh, we're both so grateful to be here with you today. And hello to your audience. And um, I'm a mom of three. I have two children on the spectrum. I'm also an advocate for special needs and disabilities. My focus for writing is empowering kids and it is Thornton's as well. Um, I also do a little podcasting and live streaming. And then I manage my girls as well, their music career. I do some educating and speaking and uh, wear a couple of different hats, but uh, uh, Thornton and I met in about, we met in 2015 and we just really connected and our, our purpose for, you know, making the world a better place for kids really has always aligned. And I had, um, I had my son late in life in 2013 and through the him surviving the birth and me surviving the birth, uh, this first book came and, um, we were introduced in 2015 and he loved what I written. He had art, he was already published. And so, um, he was, he's always been, he's all, he's not only a friend to me, but he's a mentor as well. He always has been. And, um, he liked the book and the story. And he asked if he could write 10 songs because he is a songwriter. And uh, I was like, uh, yes, of course. And they were just absolutely perfect. They're precious songs. Um, there's 10 of them. The sheet music is in the book. And uh, the book is called Perfectly Me. It was inspired by my son. It's divinely don't download it, I say. And it's about understanding and knowing that no matter how you come into this world, that you're perfect, no matter what it is, um, you are okay and beautiful may just the way that you are, not what the world says that you are. Um, challenges or not, we still all have this just incredible, incredibleness, we'll call it about each of us. And that's what the book is about. And um, it's like, um, the story is, you know, my cheeks are chubby because they're full of mommy's kisses, you know, and it talks about why eyes sparkle and toes twinkle. And it's very sweet. This, this first one is very sweet. It's the first in a, a series of three books. We're calling it the inspired kid series. We're very excited about that. And there is an I am page in each of the books. Um, and that's intended to get kids started on positive language very early in life. You know, I, with my son, when he was, couldn't even really see clearly yet when he get, would get irritated, I would take a big book and sit him in my lap and show him the pictures and it would calm him down. And I would talk him through everything. And it it's, it's very soothing and healing um, books are for children and literacy. We all know is very, very important. So um, Thornton and I have been on this journey since 2015, haven't we? We have, we have definitely. Yep. So we've got, uh, we have uh, a middle grade reader also coming out and that is, uh, it's a, it's a bullying story that the kids end up seeking redemption, learn how to forgive themselves and um, they learn how to, to be forgiven by someone else and teach their friends how to be better friends. So we are trying to use words to teach and tell stories and, and help others. I think this is a, a wonderful idea. I, I think it's so important that we have people like you in this world to help others. And, you know, really when, when life starts, it all starts in the beginning, you know, as soon as, as soon as that, that, that egg and that fallopian tube meet and you go down, you know, down the fallopian tube, believe it or not, there's over, I, I think there's over 125 different parts of our, our, our DNA is already established. So personality is already had, has developed. And so as soon as that child comes out of that womb, they're, they're fresh to the world and everything we do, everything we say, how we, how we, you know, um, parent our children makes a huge difference on how they come out in this world. And in this stigmatized world and labelized world we live in where, you know, we really have to push the word kindness and we have to push the word showing gratitude and, and love, because I think in our society, we're starting to lack that a little. So it's important for people like you 
to have those books out there and to make those children aware how wonderful they are and how they are special and they mean something. Because I think, you know, if, if a child is boosted and consistently given, you know, tell, if they encourage them and tell them how wonderful they are and they see their strengths and not their weaknesses, they can turn out to be, you know, such wonderful asset to our world. And it seems to me that this has become your purpose, your divine purpose in life. Now, was it, what, what, was it your child that motivated you to get to this point? Or was it before something in your life had stirred up to get you to this point where you really have, a, you're on a journey, you're really on a mission to, you know, get the world to see life in a different aspect through music and through your writing? Mm -hmm. I would say it started before my son because my middle daughter was nonverbal as well and had challenges. Um, and, you know, I grew up in a home, my mom was in the, um, she was in the college system in Florida in the seventies. And that's when the IDEA and all the laws were first coming in and there was money and she was working in the college with, it was called the handicap department at that time. We don't use that word anymore. Right. And um, she didn't know what she was doing. Just God put something on her heart and she started writing grants and getting all this money and funding for the college and wrote all these programs for these people with disabilities. And they're still used across our country today. Um, and so when I was growing up in middle school and high school and any given night, we'd have somebody maybe at our house in a wheelchair or uh, on crutches or blind or deaf or something at our home having a meal, like, you know, so because my mother opened the door to these folks, these college kids. So that was very normal for me. I had no idea the effect it would have on me in my life uh, as an adult. And then having children born with challenges, I just, you know, this is, this is a calling that's been put on my heart is to, as well as Thornton's is to make the world a better place for our kids, but teach them how to be empowered, you know, how to be able to, um, self-regulate their emotions so that they can go from maybe a bad space to a better space. And both Thornton and I have seen what music and arts can do for a child. Uh, it's just, it's very magical. I've seen what it's done in my own children's lives. It's opened doors. It's, it's given them a pathway to be who they are. It's given them a very safe space to process whatever's happening. That's how I've raised my kids. I call it the triangle. So arts, academics, and athletics, and those arts, you know, if they were having a challenge, let's write it out, dance it out, sing it out, play it out, use an instrument, whatever you need to do. That's a safe space for you to be able to work through whatever that is and give you a voice when you can't say how you feel, you don't know how you feel. And, um, it's, you know, listen, if my kids can do it, all kids can do it. You know, even children with challenges, they can be helped and they can overcome our, our kids are so resilient and adaptable. We as humans are. And I, I think society has to realize that because I think in our generation, a lot of a lot of parents tend to pamper the child where those children are strong. They they are they have the ability within themselves to develop their their strength, develop courage to to, to create and excel with their wisdom and be able to use that to bring themselves to a point where they are actually feeling uh, at at whole and happy with themselves. And I think, you know, for music, to me, it's like a therapy. I could put music on and I could get very calm. And then all of a sudden, all these thoughts start to pour in my head and just emotions start to kind of repressed emotions will start to come up and I'll come to realizations about things that I didn't even realize before. I think music is magical. And how do you guys feel about when you create your music, especially you, Thorne, how do you, how do you look at music as a, as a way of therapy or maybe as a way of of really digging inside yourself and finding out who you are well thank you um by the way it's an honor to be on your show um oh, just want to let you, you. Um, i'm thornton klein and um i have a company uh, called clientele music and clientele records and um i've written probably over 1500 songs i can tell you about and had recorded 150 by major artists and everything but um I can tell you how it really works. It, it really affects the children. I, I teach some children too. I taught children under the Suzuki method. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but that's, there's a book called Nurture by Love, which you were talking about nurturing with love and everything. And um, yeah. that's written by Dr. Suzuki. 
himself who for, who started the um, method. I, I work, uh, teach under that method, Suzuki method, uh, but it uh, can reach kids as early as three, two, two and three and all. It really, I see the joy in kids. I see um, their whole lives affected by music uh, in a very positive way. They can, they kind of do like what I did when my mom got me into music. I'm very grateful to my mother. Uh, when I was five years old, she got me into music and uh, into piano lessons. And um, I, I always enjoyed being able to express my emotions on the piano, whether I was happy, I was sad, I was, whatever feeling I was feeling, you know, at the moment, I could express that through my, for the music. And, you know, my parents used to think that I was just making up tunes and stuff. And actually, really, they thought I was goofing off and everything, but I actually was writing songs, my very first songs and when I was five years old. So it was not just playing classical songs, you know, but but actually writing your own songs. So it's a very uh, wonderful, natural way to express uh, music. Um, it's it's a universal language, too, as you know, because you can go anywhere in the world and and you can you can connect with people through the music, you may not be able to always speak their language, but you can speak this language, which is a universal language. And so I've seen so many kids uh, go on to do really positive things, wonderful things. In fact, uh, when I teach music, I do not teach. I only teach for the love of it. I do not teach to try to make them professionals. Many right. of the kids go on to, you know, be all kinds of wonderful occupations and, and all, but, uh, but, I, like I say, there are some of my students that have gone on to be professionals and in, in, uh, doing some amazing things in music, but I don't do it for that reason. I teach the love of it because they're going to be consumers of music one day. They're going to be people that um, that is just they can relax after work when they've been working so hard. It just really uh, it's a wonderful gift to people. You know, music is. So. It really is. It really is. And I heard that you had recorded a song with your daughter. Tell us a little about that. For, you mean, uh, well, it was my daughter. My daughter? I, I do have a daughter, but. Uh, oh, did you record a song also? Both of you. Well, I wrote a song for my daughter too, but I didn't know which song you're talking about. You're talking about the one that we wrote, uh, Mary, and, Mary and I wrote um, for the Sisters J that recorded, or are you talking about the song I wrote for my daughter who How about the one that we wrote with Elizabeth last. Uh, yeah, we wrote it two summers ago, I think. And it was, it's based mm -hmm. on a true story actually in her life. And, um, um, that one's a real special song. Open win is what it's called. O P E N W H E N. Um, and, uh, it's about writing letters to people when you're far away, when they need inspiration, when they're feeling sad and lonely, you know, words of encouragement. Um, and uh, it's my daughter did this for somebody in her life when she was in high school, going to college years ago. And some of her friends did it for her. And so that's kind of where the story came from in, in the song. Um, and it, it did go number one on the Europe, European and independent charts at world charts. And um, it's a, uh, we have a friend out in Seattle, Kevin McDonald, I'm giving a shout out to positive talk radio. And that's his favorite song. <laughs> he loves that song. And, um, but you know, it's about, it, the song says open when you need a new song, which is kind of cute, but open yeah. when you, uh, open when you want it, you need to remember where you belong, you know, um, it, it's, it's really beautiful. And it was fun to write with her. Wasn't it Thornton? It was definitely very fun. Well, um, I really enjoyed um, being uh, here on the show today. This is so enlightening to me. I always learn something from uh, interviews and things like that. Always, always constant learning. Uh, I like to learn. You know, it's so nice to have Thornton on the show. But one thing I, I, I just came to my mind when we, we started talking is when you we're talking about, you know, how important it is from childhood and on, you know, I, I thought about when you were talking about your own children and, and their struggles. And I remember when my I had two children that had a learning disability and they struggled. 
And the, you know, the one thing I found is that when, when I came to the school and I was working with the teachers and I was working with the administration and trying to get the best care possible for my children, they were, uh, you know, they couldn't believe how easygoing I was because they told me that one of the biggest obstacles they came across was even the parents were in denial. When a child had issues, the parents were in denial, therefore the children were in denial. And in order, in order for a child to heal and to, a child to, you know, to, uh, to rise above the, the chaos and to be able to move forward in life, you have to really accept what's going on and get past that denial stage. And I think it's so important that people, you know, accept, you know, what's going on, accept that maybe a child is having struggles or even an adult and be able to just love yourself for who you are and love that person for who they are. And it doesn't, they don't have to fit into the, the labelization or the stigmatisms that we have in society and, and just look at that person and, and tell that person you have such beautiful, positive qualities and focus on those positive qualities. And it seems like that's what you're doing. So maybe you can go more into detail. I'd love to hear, you know, your analogy on how you feel about children and parenting and even, you know, how you're raising your children to become such fine young adults. Thank you, Stacy. You know, you've touched on some very important things and no parent wants to hear there's something wrong with their child. Yeah. Uh, and I write for an online magazine, Wow Warrior Women, and I just handed in my, my next article and it's about early diagnosis, um, yeah. what to do and how to deal with that. But, you know, even the second time around with my son and his diagnosis, it was still hard, you know, yeah. um, nobody wants to hear that. And the thing is, we have to remember this. If we take a child to the doctor and um, they need a proper diagnosis in order to get the medication they need in order to get better. And mm -hmm. it's the same thing with a child who has a challenge, no matter what that challenge is, the, the greatest thing that we can do for our children is to, you, you're gonna go have, have grief and you're gonna have guilt and you're gonna have all these things that you go through after a diagnosis has been given, if it has been given to your child. But then you've got to rise from that and empower yourself by educating yourself. That's one of the greatest things I ever did for myself was I, I educated myself and I went and got certified as an advocate through Vanderbilt so that I could not only help my children and my family and know the laws more and what our rights were, but then I could help other families as well. So, you know, say your child is has sensory processing issues, or they have fine motor skill issues or language impairment or some kind of developmental delay or something, then read up on it as much as you can, because when you understanding what's happening, then you can then teach your child what's going on or know how to treat them, how to help them, what the right therapies are for your child. Both I have two of children who went through early intervention therapies. Um, my little guy's 10 and he still gets OT and speech. And I'm so grateful for it because yes. he's conquered so many things in his life. I mean, when he was born, he couldn't swallow. Mm -hmm. um, you teach him how to swallow. Um, my second daughter, I had to teach her how to speak the English language because mm -hmm. she couldn't do it. And it just, I think these moments I've had with my children have opened up my eyes to so many things that have changed me as a parent, a hundred percent. And yes. I'm not saying that I'm doing anything better than anyone else. I'm saying, this is my journey. This is what's happened to me. And it's changed my life, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so I had to go, okay, so this is what life has given me or what, how my life is right. Or our life is, how can I be the best parent for my child? How can I help them be very successful in their life? And that's where I guess I pivoted when I, when they were younger. And what I saw with my kiddos was not only using those uh, avenues of uh, being able to process the arts or you know, writing or drawing or singing or dancing or playing an instrument or running or whatever it was. My oldest had a lot of sensory issues, but 23 years ago, there was not very many people diagnosing and the pediatrician said, she'll get over it. She'll be fine. Well, she's had sensory issues her whole life. She's 23 now, you know? Right. Yeah. And 
she has learned through everything I've learned and been able to teach her through what I've learned with her sister and brother. Yeah. Given her the empowerment to go, okay, I got to take a break right now, or I have to go do this for myself, or I need to do more self-care, or I don't need to go into that situation because it's not going to be for my highest and best good. And to be more aware, this is about becoming more aware in life as well. Um, that empowers us. Yes. And, you know, I just, I mean, I, I, when, when I would look at my children and I started pouring into them positivity, that's how they show up. Kids are going to show up. However, we talk to them, like if yes. we're constantly beating them down and, oh my gosh, you're so lazy and you don't listen and you don't do this and you just, that's what happens, right? We yes. keep exactly manifesting it we're putting it in the universe and you're like okay i'm going to show you more of it you know and mm -hmm. so we have to keep saying to them i think the as a parent with a child with a challenge never tell them they can't do something because you're right. afraid or they're afraid like my son is on a field trip today he is away from me from eight this morning till seven tonight he's 10 never in his life has he been away from me that long yeah. I've never not been on a field trip with him. And he was very scared. And I was scared too at first, but I'm like, buddy, I just know you're going to have the best time. And I just know that you're going to come home and tell me a million stories today. And I really encouraged him to be brave and to not fall into that fear and not go. Cause even on the way to school, he was like, Oh, if we're late, I guess I might miss it. And I knew yeah. what he was doing. I was like, it's going to be okay. But I did have to go in and have those conversations with his teacher because we're brand new to this school. And right. so um, I was like, you know, he is afraid. He has a lot of anxiety. And so there I said, as long as you let him know, he can call me if he needs to. I think he'll yeah. be okay. You know, so we don't want to keep our kids from doing things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I don't walk into a situation like my son plays soccer, right? I don't walk into it going, my son is autism level one with X, Y, Z, because I don't want them treating him that way, but right. if the situation comes up and I need to make them aware, like mm -hmm. then I have to do that. And we tried a uh, jujitsu once and the, the, the instructor was, oh my gosh, I almost walked out of there with my child because, um, if he, he doesn't always look you in the face and the instructor was yeah. like, look at me in the face, look at me in the face. You got to look at me in the face. And I'm like, dude, mm -hmm. you understand this is not a disrespect thing this is this is part of a child whose brain doesn't function like yours yes and you've got to be patient with him and he has to earn he has to have trust with you for him to look at you there has to be a connection made he's not going to just look at you because you're, you're you're expecting it out of him because you're his instructor so i think we had we really have to get to know our children and yes. I, I don't need to be talking all over the board, but all of this, mm -hmm. you know, it, it all relates to, to each other, to itself. Um, you know, I, I was, I guess I was forced to learn how to do all this, you know, a parent who has a child who's born that's blind or deaf, what are you going to do as that parent? You have to learn their world, not your world. Right. And it. I think these kids, one of the reasons they keep coming in is because we are supposed to be thinking outside the box, you know, more and more, we are supposed to see the world through different eyes, not just this little space right here, you know? Yeah. And, um, I mean, we have one in 36 kids who are being diagnosed with autism right now and, and mostly boys Yeah, more than girls. Um, and so we have to keep we have to keep acclimating to what's happening in the world and the children that are coming in so we can empower them because they're our future. So we, yes. if we have this many people coming in like this right now, we have to help that future be successful. Don't we? Oh, a hundred percent. You've touched so many important topics. I think one of them too, is, is that 
when we are pregnant with our child, you know, we, we see these books and it's like, you know, nine months and da da da. And every month it tells you what's going to happen. And then you get this Brady bunch, you know, shows and, and, and you, you're thinking in your head, you know, Oh, we're going to, you know, we're going to have a child and the picket fence and they're going to grow up to be wonderful human beings. And then one day maybe they'll get married and blah, 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 blah. But nobody, nobody set these parents up for, the journey and that nothing ever comes exactly the way we expect it and that there are obstacles in our journeys and there are blockages in our journeys. And sometimes our journey takes us on a totally different direction and we're not equipped always to handle it. And, you know, so many times it's like, it just, it's just thrown at you usually. And it's like, oh my God, what do I do? And, you know, and for so many parents, the easiest thing to do is to be in denial and not have to accept it because then you don't have to face the problem and the problem can be very scary. And sometimes, you know, parents don't mean to do it. It's just that they're scared. They're scared of change. They're scared of what's going to happen. They're not, you know, or maybe they didn't have their own support system when they were growing up. So they just don't know how to deal with it. And, you know, we, we, in in a society now, we know so much autism is so prevalent in our society and the numbers keep rising so we have to ask why you know people with epilepsy the correlation with people with epilepsy and autism is very high a lot of children or a lot of adults that get that get epilepsy have autism too so and in the in the uk it's double the amount so why is this happening what's causing it you know we really need to get down to the root cause but during this, we have to look, the child is the most important thing. We need to learn coping skills. I think it's so important for to learn, you know, the, for the parent to learn coping skills so they can strengthen themselves and they can be able to give that child the love and the care that they deserve. And one of the biggest things that you mentioned was the power of positivity. And I think that goes a long way. I even my own life and everybody I speak into that have journey obstacles in their journey if they didn't have the power of positivity, they don't think they would have went through it. You really have to pump yourself up with positivity. And I think you have to pump the child up with positivity. And in, I believe like in every every negative thing that happens to us, we could pull something positive out of it, whether it gave us strength, whether it gave us a different way of looking at people. You know, I see when I, just like you, when I look at people, I don't see the same thing that other people see. I look through their eyes and I see what's inside. And yeah, I think that's very important important. So maybe you could tap a little bit in about the the power of positivity and how that could help people during those journeys where we are just hit with obstacles and we just don't know how to get through it. You know, Stacy, that is so important because we, we almost, that's a guarantee in life, right? We're going to have a challenge. It's somewhere in some way, something's going to happen. And we certainly learned that through the pandemic, didn't we? Yeah. Oh yeah. We don't know what's going to be expected. Now, I believe that teaching resiliency, I would say my parents divorced when I was young. So I think when you come from environment, um, when you're young of struggle of any kind, and there are so many different varieties that, that people go through it, you instantly become a survivor if you get through it. And I know my coping mechanism was to tell myself everything was going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. And so that's got me through times in my adult life. When my husband had cancer and my girls were little, I never changed anything in the house. We just had the same routine so that the kids would feel stable and normal because I, you know, parents divorcing, you don't have that stability. So I know how important that is for children to have a stable environment as they have. Now we don't have a lot of control over things that happen, but we do have control over things we have control over. Right. Right. We have Mm -hmm or the way we raise a child and how we treat them and how we talk to them. And they implement every single thing we do. So that Mm -hmm. whole don't do as I do, do as I say, it does not work. Mm -hmm. So we have to be those examples for our children to, if you're, if you're a married couple that a child can see, okay, that's how a mom and dad or mom and mom or dad and dad, work, whatever the situation is, that's how it works. So that yes. one day they can grow up and do the same thing. They got to have an example. And yes. I, I learned that in my marriage because I watched my mom be this wonder woman, do everything, <laughs> raise three kids, full-time job. And so I found myself doing that in my life with my kids. And then I had, it was like an aha moment for me. And I was like, whoa, okay. 
I have to partner. I have a partner here. We need to equal, you know, so they get that energy from both of us to make them more whole and they can yeah. go out in the world and do that. So I, I know that it's very important for us as adults when we become parents to, um, I, there are three things I think are very important. We have to own our stuff, crap, mm -hmm. whatever you call it. Right. And uh, be responsible and be willing to look ourselves in the mirror and go, what do I need to heal, fix process through? So I can be the best version of myself for my child and for myself, mm -hmm. my mate, spouse, whatever. Also, yeah. what am I, what am I vibrating at every day? What is the energy I'm putting out? Is it positive? Is it negative? Is it heavy? Is it light? Is it um, easy to be around? Is it um, creating stress for my kids? You know, we have to, we have to think about those things. It's, it's all about expanding our awareness. Yes. And then, then we have to, what is our motivation for what we do? You know, most of us are running around the world, reacting to everything because of things, traumas in our childhood or hurts and pain. And so when we make decisions about things, am I doing that because I have a fear um, am I doing that because of a broken space? I haven't healed. Like I cried for a year for my oldest went to college and then it dawned on me. Well, my dad left when I was young. So there's that abandonment there. So this is not about her and it's not on her. It's on me. And yeah. I have to heal that part of me because this is her time in life to go and do that 18 year old thing out in college in the world. And yeah. she can go without feeling guilty. My mom, I can't leave my mom, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what I saw was as I was becoming more aware about all these things, and I felt like my, my life just kind of pushed me in that direction, you know, the more I could find resiliency and the things that were happening through, like I said, my husband had cancer and then my middle daughter, um, you know, being born with the, the dis challenges, yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I was completely like, I mean, I had grown up around this people with challenges. I never knew I was going to have a child with it. And yeah. she looked really normal. That's the other thing. It was one of like, you talked about earlier, those invisible disabilities or challenges. And so, um, I had to learn what to do with that. And I felt so alone. So I had to figure out how to lift myself up in order to be able to get through it. But I wanted to teach my children how to be resilient through what they're going through and to know, okay. listen, it's going to be okay. You, you can ask my girls, what's one of the things mom always says when something's happening. That's like, Oh my gosh, the world's falling apart. It's going to be okay. That's what yeah. I <laughs> and now I have the, they say it to me sometimes, you know, but yeah. my middle daughter was experienced a significant trauma when she was five in school. We spent four years in a lawsuit with other families. It was a traumatizing situation. Yeah. And when you, it changes everything about you in your life. The way you parent, okay. the way you look at life, the way you feel about other people, the way you feel about other people with your children, you know, and I'm here on this side now. And part of what got me through was, was try, staying positive was mm -hmm having a more, um, it, it wasn't in the moment. I tell you that it took yeah. years, and years. My son mm -hmm. coming into my life was a great healer for me. I call him our puzzle piece to mm -hmm. our family. He kind of brings everything together. And he was my, my healing because, and, and that act of what happened to my daughter are those eight months. Um, I lost faith in everything, Stacy. Oh everything. yeah. God, man justice system, everything. Yeah. And I had to find it. You know, I had to find myself. I had to find that thing that would keep me going and that purpose and knowing that nothing is actually perfect, but if we can right. find those wonderful things and those perfections within that, yeah, those, that's the sweet things in life, isn't it? Oh yeah, most definitely. I think people have to realize too that, you know, we're human, we're human people and we can only take so much as a human being, you know, we're not robots 
And it, it, I, you know, I look at people, I, I say, and I say, we're like a, a pot of boiling water. You can only put the flame up so high for so long and eventually it's going to boil over. And, you know, and, and if we keep holding all those repressed emotions in and we don't somehow get it out in a positive way, you know, eventually you're going to look at life and you're going to feel like it's a highway with six lanes and you have to make a sudden turn, but you don't know where to go. And then, you know, and I've, I've seen it in myself. I've seen it in other people. You become like emotionless. You have all these emotions inside. You've repressed them for so long because you don't know how to deal with them. And then all of a sudden you, your, your emotions are, are, they're there, but they're not. And you just don't know what to do. And, you know, so many people feel like they want to run. So many people just feel overwhelmed and they just, just, they're losing it because they just don't know how to handle it, but it's okay because we're human, you know, and that's where we have to just stop and we have to realize, okay, you know, how do I heal myself? And then once you heal yourself, then you could, you know, take care of the people you love. And then you can maybe heal other people outside, you know, your intermediate family, but it's a process and it doesn't happen overnight, but it's okay. And people don't have to put that facade on everything's wonderful in my world because it's normal to have those moments in life because life is not perfect and life has many obstacles. And, you know, it's just all about learning how to cope with it. And I think your, your focus on positivity and, and just pulling out the positiveness and realizing that we are human and these things do occur and then everything will be okay. And that's one thing I've seen in my own life is that no matter when it happens, it's overwhelming. But this, yeah. if you look back on life, we've gotten through it, you know, life somehow we've gotten through. If you look at any obstacles that you've endured in your entire lifetime, you ha you got through it. You know, it wasn't easy at the moment, but we get through it in life. And I think that's an important comment is that it's going to be okay. And I, I think that's really good that you think like that. And sometimes there's parts of us that die, right? They die along with the traumas that happen. Yeah. And changes you. I mean, I remember being in for years, I, I, I didn't let my, my girls sometimes go do certain things because I was like, oh my God, what if something happens? Cause I wasn't, yeah. I couldn't the first time that things happen with my, my child. And right. then I, I can't live this way. I have to, I trust in God. I have to put my trust that they're going to be all right. And, but yeah. we have to teach our kids. I think it's so important if we can give kids tools for self-regulation to understand mm -hmm. their emotions, thoughts, and feelings, what's happening in their body at the moment, how to process through it, give them different ways to process. Like we've talked about, yeah. then they can go from an extreme or an upsetting situation, then they can move to a more positive one. That's extremely empowering to a human to yeah. be able to a child. And then you're going to cut down on bullying and you're going to cut down on, you know, uh, fit throwing and, and anger outlet leashing and, you know, some of these other things and, and no child should ever think that suicide is their only option. No, 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 no ever. Right. Yeah. And it's, and you know, a lot of times when people commit suicide, you don't even know the signs and it's because they just, they're, they're waking up every morning to a life. They, they just can't handle and they're unhappy and they grow into anger, depression, and they, they're living a life that, that, that it, they just, they just don't want, and they just don't know how to handle it. But if, you know, if, if we can try to, you know, really coach our children from the day they're born and, and try to, you know, and communicate, I think communication is key. You know, so many times parents don't really, you know, they're, they're so, you know, it doesn't happen on purpose, but parent, we all live in a very hectic society. It's a go, 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 do, do, do. And sometimes we, we forget that communication is so important to talk to our child daily, to try to somehow our kids, you know, when they get to certain ages, they don't always like to tell us everything, but somehow, some way, if we can just make it seem like you could tell me anything and I won't be a judge, I won't judge you and I won't get mad at you, but I'm here for you and I'll understand as best as I can and I'll be a support for you, but you can tell me anything and ask questions or and listen and not be so much of a talker and, and try to tell the person what to do all the time, but be a listener and, and do whatever you can to, you know, reinforce how they're feeling and maybe 
you know, put a positive note in it and maybe not tell them what to do, but make, make them see the light in a different, in a different direction. Right. Absolutely. And like for my oldest, who even now, you know, she was just, oh, painfully shy. I mean, just had such a hard time talking about her feelings and what she thought, and, and but she could write it, you mm -hmm. know, and now she's got three, three beautiful songs out there in the world that she wrote. Um, and, um, she can even to this day, I'm like, okay, honey, if you're having a hard time with this, just, just write it to me, text me, tell me what's yeah. happening. Okay. And then, you know, and, and we have to give them that room, like you said, to not judge and to not be telling them what to do, but to give them that freedom. You know, my middle daughter, she started drawing before she was two. And even at that age, she was like very detailed in what her drawings were. And I thought, wow, that's really great. Cause it was keeping her busy. Right. Right. <laughs> exactly. Healthy. So I was like, yes, this is awesome. <laughs> and, um, but it's the way she processed. She has processed so much of her life and her traumas through from her childhood through her artwork. And, um, and now, you know, she's at college and she's an anim, you know, she's going for animation and filmmaking and, um, it is a lifesaver. So even now, you know, mom, I need, I got to draw, you know, and I'm like, okay, go, you know, yeah. do, do what you got to do process it out. It's okay. So for some people it's walking or being on a treadmill or running or painting or working in the garden or building or, you know, and you don't have to turn it into a profession, but no. just give it's part of self-care. Just give yeah. that space, Get, teach your kids, these tools, they can be resilient in life. Yes. Know, and like, you know, my oldest, she has the, the kids, we call it the toolbox, right? What can yeah. out of the toolbox? to help me today with whatever I'm going through. Yeah. You know, and I think it's so important to just let your children be who they want to be. And, you know, I see so many parents, sometimes they try to, they, they try to live their life the way, because maybe they had a restricted life or maybe the parents, their parents told them what to do and they didn't get to do certain things and they wish they did. And then they push those things onto their child. And it's so important just to let your child grow just like a bird and let them, let them fly and let them grow and become who they want to be. And I think the best thing we can do is give them those positive, you know, things that we talked about, whether it's verbally letting them draw, you know, letting them write, letting them, whatever, whatever's going to help them grow as a person. And that, that that's at one point in life, they're going to be ready to fly and we have to let go. And I think, I think as a parent, that's the hardest thing to do is to let go. But we, you know, the only thing you can do is you, you can do the best you can is to try to put as much positive input and as many values and as much good things you could do to, to make that child, you know, be strong and be and see light in its beauty and then just let them fly. And I think it's great that she found an outlet, you know, and I, I, artwork is, is, is amazing because you could do so much with just letting your emotions free. And it's funny, but, but most of the masterpieces and most of the, the, the best selling songs came when people were going through trauma. And those are the ones that became the best sellers and, you know, and became the most popular. It was the time in their life that was so emotionally grueling. They let it out. And they let it out through their artwork and they let it out through their music. And, and those are the songs that everyone can relate to. So it makes you think we're not alone because oh, why did they become the best sellers? Because there's so many millions of people out there that could relate. They can, they can bond even just with one or two of the lines of a song or seeing a piece of artwork and they get it because you're not alone in this world. And then people have to realize that. Well, also to have a space um, to feel safe enough to release whatever it is that you need to release, you know, um, and to not do damage, but also, um, you know, it's because we have to get it out of here and out of here and yes. create with us. It needs to, even if you write it down and then just rip it up and throw it away or you burn it or whatever you do with it, exactly. you know, Maybe you write, I hate you, whatever, you know, <laughs> you, know, you, somebody, you know, you suck, whatever it is. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and just write it down. Yeah. But you get it out of here and you get it, you know, on, on paper and, and you 
are able to process it out, even if it's through visualization. I, I, I'm a big one for meditation and visualization. That's always been a real helper for me. Yeah. Um, so I've used it with my girls, you know, and then with my son, you know, he knows when he, I said, okay, baby, breathe. Oh, yeah, let's breathe. Let's breathe through this, you know, come on. And so, you know, cause a lot of times if we react immediately when we're upset about something, it's not going to be the right thing, you know, yeah, exactly. The consequences for it, you know, Oh, hundred percent up and throw something across the room. A child does cause they're mad. Well, that's not going to be a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, hundred percent. Yeah. So I just, um, my kids have taught me so much. I really had no idea when I started this parenting journey and I was told I couldn't have children and mm -hmm. seven years in our marriage and my first one. And I was talking to somebody about this story yesterday. And I, I remember talking when they showed, you know, me the ultrasound, I was like, you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my child. You know, what are you talking about? Yeah, I was just told I couldn't have babies. And so I had um, four pregnancies and three babies and yeah, each of them are truly miracles and yeah. they're miracles in what they've overcome in their life. Yeah. So it's just, oh God, it's the beauty, but the, you've got to give them that space. You, you know, do. when you see your child really good at something, no matter, you know, whatever that is, then reinforce that with them in their life, you know, Under, uh, in yeah. the provide opportunities for them to excel in that, those spaces. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. And if you had to, like, before we go, if you had to give a couple of tips to parents that have children, either with autism or a disability, and because you could become a caregiver as a parent and caregiving can be very draining, can be very tiring because not only do you have to care for the person that has the disability or has the illness, but you have to take care of yourself for, you know, also. And, you know, I tell people, you got to give yourself self-love. You got to care for yourself first, because if you, how are you going to care for someone else if you can't care for yourself? And, you know, it is, it, it, people don't realize, but, it, you know, being a parent is hard enough, but being a parent with a disability or an illness or a condition is, 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 is triple the hard. And it could be a lot of stress. It could interfere with relationships. It could, it could do a lot. So maybe you can give some people some tips on how to get through life, how to cope so you can take care of yourself take care of your child, take care of your family and, and, and be able to positively move forward and have that bond. The children have the bond with you. you you have a bond if you're married and have, or a partner and you can live life in a positive sense. Right. Well, and you touched on so many things there, you know, we have to, we have to give ourselves grace. Um, we have to be forgiving. We have to forgive ourselves as well, because a lot of people blame themselves when a child's born with a disability or a challenge. Yes. Um, and so you've got to get over that blame and support systems are very, very important, Stacy. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Because, you know, there are people who, I mean, I have friends like this and they have a child with whatever challenge it is and the family is not supportive grandparents no. think they're making it up that kind of thing so you mm -hmm. need to find people that you are compatible with and that will be a support system for you uh whether yeah. you reach out to a local organization where you live mm -hmm. um resources or maybe an online social media group you know that's right. like moms of blah 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 or caregivers of blah 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 you know um so having that support is key to your survival and yes. your Yes, as mm -hmm. well as with the ch your child or children, but also, you, you know, you gotta, um, educate yourself. Like a knowledge is power. Yes. And that's going to help you feel more empowered. Like, okay, I can do this now I can do this. Cause I understand what's going on here and mm -hmm. we're going to apply X, Y, Z, and we're going to see if this works or this works, or we, we figured out that this works better for our child. Right. Uh, or, or being aware that we don't go do those things because we know there's going to be a disaster that's going to happen with our kiddo. So let's just exactly. not go do those things. Let's go do this. So, you know, if something's not working with your child because your child can't handle maybe loud noises, like we, we have learned with our son what he can handle and what he can't. Yes. And we're still surprised by those things. 
but if you, you, then you have, don't keep pushing them to do things, you know, like there, there is room for desensitization to things, but if it's really traumatizing and scary for a child, don't force them. You've right. got to let them go at their own pace. And I would say to you, if your child is in therapy of any kind, find out what the therapist is doing, implement it at home as well. You've got to be that backup support. Yes. Um, and if you find something that's working, tell them, tell your teacher at school, Hey, this is working for my guy or my girl, you know, and, um, you've got to find time for yourself. You, you have to, cause a parenting yeah. job is 24 seven. Like my husband, he basically, you know, you clock out when you leave six o'clock, yeah. eight o'clock, whatever time you leave your job and then you're done. You leave that stuff at the office. But that doesn't happen for a parent or a caregiver. It's 24 seven. So you've got to find those things for yourself that are going to work. And even if it's just as little as just sitting there and watching a mindless show on Netflix, okay? mm -hmm. <laughs> something that does not so require true. you to do anything. So yes. Yeah. That's very true. Now tell everybody about uh, your book's title. Cause you can't okay. you, you read did your book and where they can find it and give them all the information. Cause uh, I think it's so important that parents get a hold of your book. Cause it's just wonderful. Thank you so much. It's called perfectly me. And it's uh, the first book in the inspired kids series. My little guy's on the front cover when he's a baby. And um, it is a, it's a really good uh, beginner reader, first reader for children, but also for babies, you know, as well. Um, I guess up to age eight is what we have on it. You can find mm -hmm. it on the on and anywhere books are sold. Um, it came out last week and it's already a number one new release, uh, on Amazon and beginning readers. So, uh, first readers, I'm really, I'm really, really excited about that because, um, you know, this is a passion. This is, this is on my, this is my heart, you know, yeah. this is like my story in my life and the life of my child in, in a book with talking about, how mommy thinks I'm perfectly made, you know, and the preciousness about me and who I am and that I am love and I am joy, you know, and I am wonderful because, because we are, we are yeah. not an ego thing at all. It's, it's, we are, and you know, we've missed the boat on what Jesus is trying to teach everybody, love, compassion, forgiveness, acceptance. Yeah. Of others. They're basic things that if we could just all do it, the world would be so much yeah. better. <laughs> it's so true it's so true and you also have a cd because you have some music that you've created we so do, tell us yeah. about it. it's on amazon music so if you go to um i i think my my publisher is is changing the cover and the title of it but if you go if you look up mary elizabeth jackson on amazon it'll pull all that up it'll pull up my anthologies i'm in um, which are all true stories, uh, with groups of people that we all wrote our stories in there, but, um, the music will be there, uh, if you pull my name up on Amazon. Oh, excellent. And you know, what we'll do is we'll put all those links in our description. So if they, if everybody reads the description, they'll have your links in there as well. Now, is there any way people can contact you if they want to contact you? Do you have a website or maybe a contact email address that you want to share with anybody? They can go to maryejackson.com and go down to the bottom and fill that form out and they can contact me that way. And I actually think my email address is on there as well. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. I can't tell you, this has been a, a wonderful discussion. And I think it's so important because we tapped on a lot of important things, you know, we tell, you know, and, and not only we talked about autism, but you know what, there was a lot of things in this discussion that parents as a parent, you know, it, it, it's good to know these things and, and to really implement it in, in, the, in your life. Because when you speak with people, you might not be able to connect with everything they're saying, but there are certain things that you can pull from a discussion and you could actually apply to your own life and it could help you in so many ways. And, you know, I think sometimes listening to discussions like we just had, you know, there are a lot of ways that parents could even improve their parenting, you know, because parents have to realize we're not perfect. We all make mistakes. And we learn from our mistakes, but the importance is when we do make mistakes, try not to repeat them, you know, and we, and we have to realize we're not flawless individuals. You know, we do have flaws and we have to just accept when we make mistakes and just try to do it better. And I think you gave a lot of tips on how we could do parenting better. And really people have to look at themselves honestly, because honesty is key. 
and, and th think, you know what, maybe I should be doing things this way and that way. And I think some of the things you said about not blaming ourselves is very important too, because, you know, things happen in life and so many parents I've talked to, and I've been in so many advocacy um, organizations, and I've seen so many parents blame themselves when things occur and it's not their faults. You know, they have, you know, it's just things that happen in life and we have to just learn how to accept it and then cope with it and then, and move on and do the best we can as we're, as we're trying to move forward in life. But, you know, that those are very important aspects, I think. And, you know, I just thank you very much for coming on the show. You, you've tapped on a, a bunch of stuff that, you know, we didn't even touch base, you know, but so many things we, we discussed that, you know, are valuable to, to parents, to children. And, you know, I thank you so much for coming on the show. You've been a, a wonderful guest and I appreciate everything that you've shared with us. I thank you, Stacey, so much for having me on. And I just want to say one last thing. Um, the the most recent song my girls have a called "Breathe In," and it's Sisters with an S J is their name. Uh, we have tied this to a platform of inclusivity and oh, diversity and inclusivity. And uh, we've got my son is in there with some other kids with this on the spectrum. We've got some Down syndrome friends in there, and it's all about coming together. You know. Yes celebrating each other, which is really, really, really important for us to do. It's, it's not always doable in today's world, yeah. but if there are those of us who we have more and more of us doing it, more of it's going to happen. Oh, a hundred percent. And people don't realize people, you know, you could say one kind word to somebody and you could change their whole view of the day. They could be going through, through a tough day or they're, it just, you know, the day doesn't resonate well. You come over and you say, oh, you look so pretty or, you know, what a nice shirt you have on or, you know, you, you what a nice smile you have, you know, oh, thank you for doing that. You know, you didn't have to. And just little kind words could go a long way. And if we could just take a moment to just sometimes share with other individuals, you don't even have to know them. You could just see them doing something good and just complimenting them. And what a whirlwind of, of difference it makes. You know, I think we we all have to like, you know, stop and, and really it's not about us. We have to really have to put retrain our brain and say it's about, you know, it's about the people we love. You know, we have to love ourselves, but, you know, don't let's be, let's not be selfish. And maybe we start giving a little bit more to the people we love around us and not take pe people for granted. And and, you know, like you said, put in that graciousness and that love love and be a little kinder to people and, and not judgmental. If someone has something wrong, if they have Down syndrome, or if they have a disability, don't be mean to them or bully them or, or tease them. Instead, see the beauty within them and see how hard they're trying to, to be, you know, the best they can and, and compliment them on that because it really goes a long way. You could say one nice thing and you could tap into how they feel and you know what, you, you've helped that person in more ways than you can imagine. Oh yeah. And you know, put, lend a hand to someone who may be having a hard time, just yes. you know, someone, um, you can make all the difference in their, in, in their life. And, um, I do want to say thank you so much to Norn's triad publications, because that's our publisher and they have been fantastic through this process. And we're really grateful for them. And, um, you know, we all need support, don't we? we oh, we definitely do. I don't think anybody in this world can survive without other people's support. We need each other. We rely on each other, whether we realize it or not. You can't live life and think you can, can do it all because you can't. You know, we all need to be a support and and be, and help each other. Even people we don't know, you know, just put it out there. Do whatever you can. You know, the littlest things can matter. That's absolutely true. Yes. And Stacy, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. And you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye-bye.